All right, everybody, good morning and welcome. This is Laura Miller with Sheen Magazine here with none other than the king of the impersonations of the new era, Godfrey. We're going to discuss his newest set on eBay Ready with Tiffany Haddish. And we're going to get right dig into that. We're going to talk about some Chicago things because, you know, yes. what else. of course, a bunch of other stuff we're going to get into today. Thank you so much for joining, Godfrey. Thank you. How you doing? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I'm, yeah, it's amazing how one little thing can shift your whole career, you know? And uh, I guess, got I can't thank Tiffany Haddish enough. I mean, she's a really good friend of mine. I've known Tiffany Haddish since 2003. So before any of this, I've known her for a long time. And, you know, and just being her friend, I, this is just like amazing. Like, what happened? You know, you, you know, this business is so, it just ebbs and flows. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to be on top one day, bottom. Day. It's a long journey, but I've been fortunate to just be always in cruise control. I've always been around. I've always been in cruise control. And like, you know, you meet people like a person like Tiffany, who's so giving and just, she, and she, she just started being famous. She just started and she just yeah. already within a year and a half, maybe a year and a half to almost going on two years. She's, looked she's literally opened the door for door for 12 comedians 12 wow. 12 of them i mean that's, that's a testament of black women being amazing oh that's you guys true. are all i mean that's 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 just truth that's all true Bless i mean it's the truth it's that it's the black women are it's the truth they you, you black women help everybody no matter what their race is black women forgiving yeah you just you're the reason why um election shift when you all come out amen people get ousted out you know you back us up with you know when it's police brutality or whatever black women are always speaking up for us Heck, but yeah. the same favor needs to be returned to you all we owe you a whole bunch that's a whole nother conversation we could no get but, that, but like just to throw that in there but it's but yeah. you, you, des you deserve a lot of reciprocity for real I, I agree. I agree. And I've done multiple think pieces on the like. And so <laughs> I completely feel you. But one thing I can tell you that I completely agree. I met Tiffany Haddish at a luncheon that we did for the Carmichael show a couple of years ago. Yes. And she was so sweet because, you know, her and Loretta and David Ellinger, they're just in and Gerard. Everybody was just super duper nice. And um, I was I complimenting her outfit. I'm like, it's so cute. Like, do you have more of this? She was like, you can have mine. I was like, yes. <laughs> you just gonna give it to me? And everyone that I meet in the co in the comedy community says the same about her that she's just extremely warm and giving. And I can can completely vouch for that because she has been that considerate with me. Yeah, yeah. She, she and and what and what she's been through, she literally is going the opposite way yeah. for all the way people that might have treated her as she came up. She said, "I'm going to do the opposite." I'm going to be, I'm going to show nothing but love and positivity. And I've seen her do that. She has not missed a step. She has been a woman of her word. She has not changed. She always had a plan. She always talked about success. Mm -hmm. I remember even when things were, but it's always, but she's proven it's, it is up out here when you change this. And that's it what she sure did. Is. And I saw, I saw the change. I saw all the things that started to happen. I mean, the tenure of, of your career, I'm sure you've seen that change happen multiple times with people. I mean, yeah. You worked with Steve Harvey. You, you, I've, you I've, worked with, with, I've worked with, with Cosby, unfortunately, what's happened to him, but still yeah, I've worked I, with Cosby. I saw that. You were the, uh, you were the, uh, I was the audience, guy. I was, I was audience coordinator. That yeah. was one of my first jobs coming from Chicago to New York. I've worked with Seinfeld. I've worked with Ray Model, different, even Robin Williams been, you know, seven up campaigns, been on, you know, different TV shows and movies here, Soul Play and Zoolander. I mean, just opportunities in and out. I've done a special on Showtime and did stuff on Comedy Central, MTV, you know, all the, the, the road that a lot of us take. I've yeah. done a lot of that VH1 and been fortunate to do all of that. So it's just, it's, it's like, it's a long, it's a long race. It's, the, it's a long race. It's a journey and, and things shift all the time. And, and just to see this happening is another phase in my life where I'm like, all right, this is cool. Yeah. It's, and and Netflix is such a big, big, big platform Huge. for comedians. Oh my goodness. And it's and it and you wanna get in. You wanna be in the club. 
and 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 I hosted Tiffany's um, live uh, uh, live tour before COVID. It was the the first season with Flame Monroe, mm -hmm. who's also from Chicago. Flame Monroe, Shantae Wayans, it was them. I hosted the live thing. I went on oh. tour, ten cities. So Tiffany asked me in 2019 to be on the second season, and so I said, "All right." And Man, I'm glad I took that offer. Woo. Yeah, and it was, I caught it this morning, actually. I snuck and watched it. For you guys watching, it is actually, they ready, it's streaming right now on Netflix, so you can check it out. It sure is, and it's dynamite. The whole, it's the whole lineup, Dean Edwards, Tony Woods, um, Eric, um, Aaron Jackson, Barbara Carlisle, Kimberly Clark. It's just a great variety of seasoned veterans, and we we throwing down. Yes, Period. I love it. And what I want to talk to you about is cultivating your set because your set was approximately fifteen minutes, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure like, how long like you yeah. recorded, though. I'm sure you did the longest. We all, we were up there for about twenty five minutes each, you know, and then they had to, you know, for time wise. But I, I, I'm kind of like, at first, everyone's like, why? We wanted you to do an hour. I go, you know what? In a way, this is kind of cool. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just the, it's like the pre, it's like the trailer to the real thing that's about to come. Exactly. And I love that and people got a piece of it. And, you know, it just lets you know, too, the, 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 and, and just because it's COVID, it was COVID, we, we actually shot outside. Did you? Yeah. Wow. In LA. We, we shot in Long Beach, California. LB. We shot at the theater that Richard Pryor, that Richard Pryor did his 1979 concert at. Oh but we goodness. couldn't do it inside because of COVID, but mm -hmm. we did it outside, which was, was it was pretty amazing. And, and the, uh, shout out to Wanda Sykes and her company yes. and her partner Paige. I mean, Paige, actually, her, one of her producing partners, they're both comedians. So they made sure they said, hey, we know this is going to be outside, but you know we're comics, too. And you know the outside is like kryptonite to comedians. Is it? But Why? Because there's too many disturbances. Because oh, yeah, because cars and honking. It's and hard enough to, to get people to laugh and pay attention, let alone you got a car, a bird, you got... <laughs> <laughs> rain wind snow <laughs> police and we had ambulances go by i had a helicopter go over one time mm. on one of my sets i was like are you kidding me <laughs> <laughs> but it was great the audience was appreciative some of them had masks on that threw us off a little bit but people were laughing those laughs you hear they're real I like, love that. And I like laughs. that, not to give anything away in the special, because again, we want you guys to watch, but you also identified some of those changes too in your set. And yeah. I do that all the time. Like we do live interviews with the magazine and legit, I live near a hospital. So it's like constantly ambulances and like police cars or whatever. Yeah. You know, Chicago is what it is. And <laughs> as a result <laughs> of that, it's just right. more. And yep. especially the north side, right? Because north side is just loud. That's where I grew up, on the north yeah, side. Yeah, I know. I remember reading that you were from uptown. And I was going to ask you, because there is a, a set that you've done before, and you mentioned how um, your Nigerian uh, fans come to the show and they ask you what part of Nigeria you're from. I mean, all the time. How often do they ask you what part of Chicago you're from? What'd you say? How often do people ask you what part of Chicago? Oh, they always ask. Oh, they'll be like, yo, what part, what part of Chicago? I'll be like, North Side, what, what high school, Lane Tech. Oh, man, Lane Tech, you know. Chicago is very competitive. When it, it, Chicago is all about the high schools. It is about the high schools. And, like, I don't like to tell people. So, again, in what you know, and I'm sure you know this, this is a catch-all term a lot of times for Chicago and the Chicago land area, which is why they ask you specifically where you're from because it deviates from the answer. So everybody's like, well, what high school? I was talking to Common, not a name drop, just was interviewing him. And I was like, oh, I went to high school with Lena Wave. And he looked at me very sternly and he said, what high school did you go to? Yes. <laughs> and I was like, well, you went to Evanston Township. <laughs> he was like. <laughs> you, oh, you went to Evanston Township, huh? Yeah. OK, Lena, I didn't know Lena went to Evanston. I know she was in Chicago. <laughs> Evanston Township. It's out now. Whatever. I'm talking to you. It's the thing. We're having a where did Where did Where did Common go? What high school he go to? Uh, I think he went to CVS. Okay, that's Bernie Mac. 
Bernie Mac, George Wilborn, yes, CBS. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know, that's the thing in a high school is kind of do, um, Lane Tech is one of those that kind of matriculates exactly, it tells us exactly what kind of upbringing you had in that particular pocket. Like Lena yeah. is from Chicago, but she went to EJS. So it's like that pocket is how you kind of resonate to a match. Yeah. I know. Yep. But I wanted to ask you, um, you, you talk about politics and, you know, a lot of people, a lot of our listeners may have met you through a certain Russian correspondent. A Russian? Yeah, Russian in Ancestry um, interview platform. You know. Blast. I, went to, I went to Russia in 2018. No, no, not Russia. A Russian descendant interviewer platform a lot of people know you from vlad oh i'm, I'm like what well he's yeah. he's 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 um ukrainian yeah ukrainian ussr yeah. we're gonna be we're gonna go there right. yeah so um i think that a lot of people don't understand how i mean incredibly conscious you are because comedy has a tendency to layer right and you can tell the nature of an intelligent comedian based on how they phrase things and what I've always liked about you is you've always been very distinctive in how you phrase. You're not like honing in on a specific political affiliation. Like even in this set, you were equally fair with uh, Trump and Obama. <laughs> like yeah. you, you were equally fair. And I like that about you because it's never like, you don't obviously know which way you're going to lead unless you specify which way you're going to lead. Like there's a part of the show when you're talking about an open election curtain and I was like, me too. I was that. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Definitely done that. So um, the thing I wanted to talk to you is you have, your Instagram following is awesome and your page is amazing. Go Thank you. Ago, you did a, a black wizard. Uh are you asking me a question or are you just describing what I do? <laughs> I just yeah, no, I'm giving you your flowers and then I'm going to ask. So oh, okay. <laughs> you did a black wizard from uh, Harry Potter. So I'd yeah. like to know the con How did you even come up with that? What made you think to do that particular impression? I'm a big Harry Potter fan. So I've been to the, uh, in Orlando, I've been to the Harry Potter whole thing, you know, in Orlando, Florida. Mm hmm me and my ex-girlfriend big harry potter fans i got a wand i have a friend who gave me a robe and i thought that i have these round glasses i said you know what would be funny <laughs> larry potter i mean so, it's hilarious the american version of larry potter <laughs> i said yeah. and i just it just that's just it just pops up in my head these kind of ideas and my thing is i like to go opposite i notice a lot of people especially that look like us, they all tend to, tend to do the same kind of thing. It's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of played out. And, you know, I go, Harry Potter, that's a huge, huge franchise. And our, everybody's seen Harry Potter. Even if you don't like it, you know who Harry Potter is. Exactly. And so i like, why don't I do Larry Potter? I just, I'm just into originality and just going against the grain and people going, yup. And, and, and doing things that people don't think they'll laugh at, but they go, man, that is really fun. I go, yeah, because you're smarter than that. You're, you don't have to laugh at the same monolithic stuff, man. It's, it gets a little played out. Mm -hmm. It was no different than when I did Soul Plane. When I did Soul Plane with Snoop Dogg, when we auditioned, I said, I'll just play an African. I would rather play an African than do the whole, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, the ghetto. Urban guy. Urban. I said, I'll be a fish out of water because Africans, African-Americans always joked on each other all the time. So I wanted to use that dynamic to make it different, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm just always trying to think of something just out the box, man. Yeah, I, you know, I don't even think it's that far out the box, you know? I mean, because it makes you think about it, obviously, because it's like, is is Hogwarts the only place where wizards live? Is this is it just British people? Like we only got British. But I did the American wizards. version. Yeah, like that. I mean, it makes sense to me, and it's the fact that you take the time to actually do that is yeah, yeah, extremely yeah. powerful. My, I love that. Almost too. I've I've just become it's like I have become a playhouse. You just go, oh, let me order a mustache. Let me. You start going, yo. You start your imagination. You just have a little playhouse. Let me get this hat. Let me get that. I yeah. have my Trump wig. That horrible wig. And what's great about a Trump wig is it doesn't matter what it looks like. It, you know it's Trump. You can just yeah. stack a piece of hair on your head 
and you just put a red tie and a blue jacket. As long as long as it's disheveled, it works. Just, as long as it's horrible, it's yes. like, oh, it's Trump. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> so speaking of your impressions, um, how do you, do you have like a really good memory storage? Like is your learning agility so high where you can recall people fairly easily? How are you patterning these impressions in these impressions? I just listen. You just kind of listen to, it's like my brother's a pretty good guy. He's pretty good at it too. He's not a comedian. He doesn't care about it, but mm -hmm. he's good at imp impersonating and changing his voice. Um, you just hear it. I've always been able to just hear something and repeat it, you know, just, it depends. Not I don't I can't do everybody's voice, but certain voices you hear and you go, you just start doing it. It's like people who can sing. You can't they can explain it. Just sing. They just yeah. know how. Mm -hmm. So when I hear something, I can just spit it back out. That's why I've always been good with languages. Doesn't matter how difficult the language, I can spit it right and imitate. I'm good at mimicking, you know, you know what I'm saying? So when I do Trump, it's the mouth. It's like you people are great, you know. It's the mouth. His mouth is, I told you, you people, you know, so, you know what I mean? So it's just a natural, I don't, I can't explain it. I was just born that way. <laughs> yes. So my last question is very selfish. Can you teach me how to formulate the proper Nigerian accent? Because mine ends up coming out Wakanda. Let me hear something. Um, okay. So I was in labor a couple of years ago. and You were in labor? Said, yeah, and my sister is telling me the story about the nurse that was saying they couldn't go into labor and delivery. And she was like, you cannot go in there. You cannot go in there. No, you may not see the baby. So help yeah, me. You, 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 you cannot go in there. You, you cannot, cannot see the baby. The baby. You cannot the see baby. The, baby. the baby. It's a D, like a D baby. The baby. Yeah, the baby. You cannot see the baby. You cannot you see, the see the baby. Yeah. Yes. It's not the baby. You cannot see the baby, yeah. The baby. See, that's what I was missing. I <laughs> and tried. I, and I'm Nigerian, so you know, you hear your parents talk for so long. Um, and uh, you know, you can imitate them. My sister can do it, my brother. Cause you know, it's like if you're being Haitian, it's like somebody being um, from Mexico or India, you you can imi you just imitate it cause you're, it's, it's what you grew up with, you know? Yeah. So well, I thank you for that because I knew there was something missing. I'm like, why do I keep coming out South African? Like, what is happening? Like, why can't I? Well, there were there were about 800 different accents in this place. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, they were just making doing? things up. Yeah, like what's happening here? So I thank you for that. Um, last thing again, what do you miss the most about Chicago cuisine? Because this is important. You know, we love food. Um, hot, the hot dogs. I love the Chicago dogs, baby. And I like the, um, um, you know, what's great is from the North side, the Vietnamese food, they got some good stuff over there on Argyle. Yeah. I love Vietnamese because, you know, it's all immigrants over there. You know, Uptown was the most integrated area in Chicago. And you know, Chicago's the most segregated city to, yeah. and, and Milwaukee, number one, still to this day. Mm -hmm. And I, I love, um, the Nigerian food. Yeah. I miss that and uh, the, the the deep dish pizza, Lou Malnati's. Oh my God, I'm so glad you said Lou's because that question yeah. always makes me nervous when somebody says Giordano's or something and I'm like, no. Well, they're just Giordano's, Leona's, yeah, but Lou oh, Malnati's yeah. for thick. Leona's, remember, Leona's is like yeah, the medium size. Like yeah, Leona's. And, but here's another one that I miss. When I come to Chicago, I go to Gigio's Pizza on Wilson, Broadway. Off Broadway and Wilson. GGO's Pizza is a little small area in Uptown. I already know. They have one in Evanston. You got to come. When you come back home, you have to go to the Evanston. They have a GGO's in Evanston? It's the original one. Really? Because yes. the the one we had was so, it's now it's a little bigger. It was yeah. so small. You would just grab a slice and leave. Mm-hmm. It was, and it's one of some of the best pizza I've ever eaten in yeah, my no, life. Yeah, GGO's Slams, it's actually, yeah, like, that's the first one. The initial hub is in Evanston. Is it Evanston? I got to go to the initial hub in Evanston. Yeah, yeah, it's dope. I thank you again for your time, Godfrey. Uh, yes. Thank you again for teaching me my Nigerian accent. The <laughs> baby, the baby. The baby, the baby. Yeah. It's going to work now. People are going <laughs> to like you. You know, Northside Africans are hard to please, so I'm going to work oh, that Of out. course. I mean, we're going to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you again for your time. Again, special congratulations. Your show and your set is amazing. 
Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm man, I'm, I'm so amped. I'm so excited. I'm going to be pumping it up every, and it's Black History, but let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yes. Let's get it. Yes. So again, this is Laura Miller with Sheen Magazine here with Godfrey. They Ready is available and streaming now on Netflix. Check him out. Follow him on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Is it at Godfrey? Instagram Godfrey. is Comedian Godfrey. Also, my podcast is in Godfrey We Trust on the Gas Digital Network. Also, my TV show in Godfrey We Trust is on the Kevin Hart's LOL Network. Yes. It's on Pluto and on Peacock. You know what I'm saying? Don't get tired. You did not waste your quarantine sitting still. No, I've been creating in, in my, my, my Instagram. I got surprises. I just do all types of stuff. I just keep it going. The, 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 the COVID has actually made me even more creative. I haven't stopped. I, I keep it. going. I do live every, I do a live every night, two, three hours live on Instagram late at night. If you ever want to Godfrey and the Night Owls. I'm going to jump in on Godfrey and the Night Owls. All I right. appreciate that. Thank yeah. you again for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy press day. You too. I'm going to ship you some Luma Nadis. All right. All right. Talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.